begin the meeting. This is the May 16th, 2017 meeting of the Northampton Transportation and Parking Commission. My name is Ryan O'Donnell. I'm the chair of the commission. And I know the presence of a quorum today, so I'll call the meeting to order. I'll note the audio and video recording of these proceedings. And let's begin, as we always do, with introductions for uh, the benefit of the public, starting with Ms. Grant. Krista Burnett, citizen. Wayne Feiden, Director of Planning and Sustainability. Dave Pomerantz, Director of Central Services. Jody Casper, Police Chief. Devin Bruce, Planning Board. Gina Lee Shara, I'm the Ward 4 City Councilor and Vice Chair. Terry, DPW. <coughs> Beth Kaplow at DPW. Nancy Forstall, Assistant City Collector and um, Parking Enforcement Administrator. Jackie Chan, DPW. Jamie Elroy, Fisher, Citizen. Donald Scalia, Director of the Department of Public Works. Okay. We begin every meeting with a period of public comment. It's an opportunity for the public to speak on any issue you wish. Uh, it's not a uh, time for back and forth on any subject because we can only discuss things that have been posted in advance. So it's your time to tell us anything you'd like to say. This meeting is a little bit different. It's, it's broken into two parts. We're going to uh, conduct some of our regular business at 5 and then at 5.30 we're going to take up the question of traffic calming on Nonatuck Street. Um, during that time, the public will be able to speak as well. And you can actually speak both times. But I did want to highlight that in case you want to talk about Nonatuck Street and wish to wait for 5.30. But with that, is there any general public comment on any subject from anyone at this time? OK. Um, Hearing none, we'll move into the meeting's agenda. And the first item is approval of minutes from April 18th, 2017. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? <coughs> the motion was made by Mr. Pomerantz, seconded by Mr. Abel Fisher. No discussion. Um, all in favor of approving the minutes? Please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? I abstain. There are how many? <laughs> Three or four past the minutes. <laughs> Councilor Shara, uh, Chief Casper, and Director Five abstain. Okay. So the minutes are nonetheless approved. Um, item four: reports from departments and subcommittees. Um, does the DPW have any reports to share? So there will be a roadway improvements project this year. There will be a section of Ryan Road and Park Hill Road that will be microsurface and mill and overlay. after you receive the draft report? We will you look at it. Review, okay. we make comments back to them in the final report. Oh, I see. So they get it again before it's published. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? Any other departmental updates? Yes, yeah, a couple things. The, the bike path tunnel is, is under construction. Some drainage problems have to solve, which most of them gone forward. Pleasant Street, you all know, which is sort of bicycle improvements and pedestrian improvements is going underway so far smoothly. Um, we just installed a donation from Northampton Cycling for a bike repair station, and now it's installed in Bosley Park today. Um, and tomorrow morning is bike breakfast from 7 to 10 in the courthouse lawn, to, so bicycle to work and have breakfast. Even if you don't bicycle to work, you can still do it. Any questions for Director Biden? Uh, what's the projected completion date for the tunnel at this point? I don't know the answer. The contractor has until the end of the year. Um, 
as of the spring, the end of the calendar year, as of the spring, mass dot was predicted in August, but that's before they had any problems. So as a contractor, you know, they had to decide how quickly they would. Sure, fair enough. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or discussions? Any other updates? Okay, uh, well, thank you. We'll move into item five. There are, there are two matters before us. Um, the first is 17.288, an ordinance relative to on street parking meter zones. This is relative to Bedford Terrace and Strong Avenue. Um, and this was referred to the Transportation and Parking Commission by the City Council. <coughs> Let's see. Is there a motion on a positive recommendation so we can begin to discuss this? If you don't want a positive recommendation, you can vote no uh, on the recommendation. We have to get on the floor first. So is there a motion on this? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. So Council Chair makes the motion, the second by Chief Casper. Um, if um, Council Chair would walk us through. Sure. I hear you talked about this a little bit at the last meeting, but wanted some more information. So I was led to look at Bedford Terrace in the code from a constituent who was concerned about parking and um, mostly the overnight parking there, but so Bedford Terrace is all 10 meter long-term parking spots, 28 of them. Um, and so I was looking at the code and I noticed that it was classified as 3D in all, except for additionally Strong Avenue, all the other long-term parking spots are classified as 3D and 4A. So when I looked into it, 3D designates the 10 hour meter. Um, at 50 cents an hour. 4A is for use of the permit that uh, you can get um, from the parking uh, office that is $45 and it allows you to park at those 10 hour meters without putting any money in the meter. Um, and, but it's only for use during that time that the meters are active. So um, I spoke to Nancy about it and she agreed that there, she didn't know of a reason as to why Bedford Terrace and also Strong Avenue had these long-term meters, but it wasn't designated that you could use the permit. Um, so we think that it was just, you know, maybe an oversight. Um, so this, oh, this adds to Bedford Terrace and Strong Avenue the additional 4A designation. And I also checked with Nancy, and in practice, the PEOs treat those two streets as they do any other long-term parking meters. So when they see a permit, they uh, don't take it. So in practice, they have the 4A designation, they, they use the 4A designation, it's just not the code. So this is just the code side, what is already in practice. Any discussion on this ordinance? Okay. Move me approve. Okay, the motion's already on the floor, so there's no further discussion. All in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you very much. Um, joined by Gary Hartwell, a citizen member of the commission. And uh, when we write our minutes, we'll note that I am that member's con, if, if later than normal. Um, so now we're going to move on to 17.301. This is an ordinance to amend chapter 312-110 of the code book relative to parking time limits and classes in the Kirkland Avenue, Masonic Street, and Merrick Lane parking areas. This was also referred to the commission by the city council. Is there a motion for a positive recommendation to get this on the floor for discussion? Okay. Uh, council Chair moves the uh, uh, recommendations. Second. second. Mr. Hartwell seconds it. Okay. Um, this comes from the mayor, but the DPW, I would imagine, might be able to explain it. I hope. No? <laughs> no? Okay. Really? Okay. Well, I wasn't, no one, uh, the mayor didn't explain this ordinance to me. Um, it seems to be, you know, reading, uh, reading it, it seems to expand the time limit in these three um, off-street parking areas uh, from two to three hours and from one to two hours. Um, I mean, I personally have no problem with that, but I also don't know the rationale for why it's being offered. You know so I don't, I don't know the details of this, but I know that was one of the recommendations in the parking study. So I'm assuming Lynn is going through line by line in the parking study and moving those things forward. So. That's my assumption, too. And we did that, of course, for, for Main Street, extending the time. Main Street needs to serve downtown as well. So 
Um, is there any, I mean, on the just the merits of extending the, the time in these off street parking areas, is there any concern from the commission about, about doing so? Ms. Forrest? I just have a question about the designation of the parking area. It says parking area, parking like app. But aren't they talking about actually armory parking lot? Yes. Back here. here. So, I was really confused when I first saw the agenda. I right. looked at this and just did it. Yeah. Mm. Between Kirkland Ave and Armory. The Kirkland Ave itself is the actual alley, the actual right. alleyway. So it's the, it's the boundaries of Kirkland Ave and and the armory lot, lot. So it's the armory lot, and the same thing would be the Masonic Street there. That's the Masonic Street parking lot. Masonic lot. My only reservation is if the code currently says Kirkland Avenue. We could just do it in parentheses. You know, keep Kirkland Avenue and do Masonic Lot parentheses and Masonic Street with Masonic Street lot. So have two names and whichever one you can notify. Um, so is there a, is that a motion? What's the, what's the specific? Would you like to move to amend this? Yes. Okay. I move to amend it to add under Kirkland Avenue just in parentheses, Masonic Street Lot, I mean um, Armory Lot and under Masonic Street to Masonic Lot. Okay. Okay. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Second, second by Mr. Hockwell. Um, any discussion on that motion to amend? Did Wayne's, did he get your street concern? I mean, is two names going to solve it? I would have to look and see if there's some reason why Lynn actually put it down like this, but I've never seen it referred to as the parking area of Kirkland Avenue. Is this referring lot. to the smaller lot? You know, it's divided in two there. Is, mm -hmm. is the whole entity, the both lots considered one lot? Yeah, it's, so it's it's the whole thing. thing. So, so the whole thing is the Armory Street lot? I wonder if it's just Armory lot. lot. Right, right. So unless there's some designation on some map that I've, personally, I've never been called Kirkland Ave, nor have I seen that in the schedules. Um, I guess what I was wondering about is there are meters on the side. On the sun. Yeah, and so I don't want to confuse it. We're trying to fix the right. lot. No. I don't want to the whole, confuse the street with the lot. The whole table is parking areas. Yeah, it says under so area so number of spaces. It says entire lot. Yeah. So this is the Masonic Street parking area. So I would take this. And your question would be whether it would be the chief's question if, if one side rules on the other. That are different from the armory street and because when we had discussed this the whole thing it was supposed to be that we were extending armory lot to three hours and masonic lot to three hours and can you permit park in armory no you can't no it's because it's considered a short-term parking lot and the permits are for long-term lots and long-term so is the class 1F correct? Yes. So armory lot is 1F. Um, well, we can either um, either advance it knowing that we're making a substantive recommendation and allow the committee and legislative matters to correct the right name of the lot, or we can hold it because it doesn't seem to be uh, an urgent matter. Why don't we not hold it, but if we, if we do a little memo to them to say, here's what we're trying to do, just figure out how to make it clear, without us telling them how to do it? That's fine. Okay, so we'll, the understanding on this vote will be that um, the first row is the armory lot in its entirety. Is that correct? Okay. And there's a problem, we can always take this up again. Okay. All right, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you very much. Um, the next item on our agenda is not until 5.30. Um, and so we will stand, we will adjourn um, until 5.30.
the purpose of having this next item at 5.30 is just to allow, make it a more convenient time for the public to be here and comment. So this commission will be adjourned until 5.30. I'll just note that we should be cognizant of not discussing any matters before the commission while we're adjourned because we need to still abide by the open meetings law. So just be cautious of that and we'll reconvene at 5.30. Okay. All right, it is a little bit past 5.30, so we will reconvene. And this is the portion of the meeting um, when the commission will consider the question of traffic calming on Nonatuck Street. And I would like to begin, um, well, actually, I think it's best if the DPW is going to make a presentation on your recommendation, correct? Correct. So I'll, make, I'll just describe the process so far. Um, in the commission. Uh, <coughs> when residents come to us with a request for traffic comment, the first step is to vote on whether to ask the DPW to go out and take some measurements of traffic, uh, speed, volume, and vehicle type. Um, this was done, and in fact, as many of you know, temporary speed bumps were put out and more measurements were taken to see the effect of the speed bumps on those numbers. Um, when that data came back, the DPW also included in uh, their report recommendations. In this case, the DPW has recommended essentially that we'll make the temporary speed bumps permanent and the DPW director will explain the recommendation in more detail. But what we're doing today in the Transportation and Parking Commission is hearing from the public about the DPW's recommendation. And we will vote ourselves on our own record. Both the recommendations will then go to the mayor, who will make the final decision on whether or not the DPW's recommendation will be constructed. So that is the process today. That is what we're doing. This body is an advisory body. We don't make the ultimate decision. Um, but this meeting today is important because it's our chance to hear from residents and other citizens um, who have something to say one way or the other. So that's what I'll say as the disclaimer. And I'd like to turn it over to Dallas Galli, our, our DPW director, to talk about the recommendation, and then we'll turn it over to you after that. Ryan, do you need me to do my disclosure? Sure. Please. Sorry. At this time, I just want to let the um, commission know and the residents know that I do live on Elm Street, which is a connecting street to Nonatuck. But I believe that I um, can and will be impartial to this agenda item, so I just wanted to disclose that. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. And the camera's rolling. Okay. Okay, so I'll just, um, I'll kind of <coughs> summarize how we got to this point and then talk a little bit about how we came up with our recommendation. So the, this uh, traffic calming application was originally submitted to this committee in August of 2015. And residents were concerned about high speeds and pedestrian safety. So in November 2015, the DPW placed traffic counters on Nonatuck Street, and the results were that we were seeing between 3,000 to 3,800 vehicles per day, and that the 85th percentile speed ranged from 36 to 42 miles an hour on Nonatuck Street. So the posted speed limit there is 30 miles an hour. So the 85th percentile speed is defined at the speed at or below which 85% of drivers travel at. So it's a, it's a national standard that's used when establishing speed limits. Um, truck volumes range from 0.4% to 0.7%. In September of 2016, the DPW installed two temporary speed pumps in their properties number 125 and number 160 for two months. And those were made of like a heavy duty rubber material. We put up warning signs, uh, did a reverse 911 call to let folks know that we were installing them. Distance between the speed humps was approximately 600 feet, and the location was selected because it's a straightaway, where you know, obviously the speeds are higher than on corners. So in October of 2016, right after we installed these temporary speed humps, we put uh, traffic counters down to see what the difference was going to be. And we showed, uh, the traffic counters showed a slight decrease in volume of a hundred, between 150 and 200 vehicles per day. So, so obviously traffic calming is about not only decreasing speeds, but, but also decreasing volumes. So, you know, we can, we can sort of 
conjecture here that drivers took a different route to uh, avoid the, the speed humps because they didn't want to deal with them. Um, and we also noticed that the 85th percentile speed decreased seven to nine miles an hour between the speed humps. So we had people traveling more closely with what the speed limit should be between the speed humps. We saw a zero to one mile an hour decrease to the west of the speed humps. Um, this is likely due to the fact that the traffic counter was sort of a ways away from, from the speed hump that was there. Um, interestingly, truck volume showed an increase to 1%, which I don't know. Um, so we've done, we've done a few things, you know, so we sort of take this data and, and our engineering department reviews it and we obviously have internal conversations. It, we've also done a, a few different things since the, this actual study with the traffic counters and the speed humps happened. Um, we've uh, painted white edge lines to delineate 11 foot travel lanes. Um, we've posted intersection ahead warning signs east and west of the intersection of Federal Street and South Main Street. There's a yield sign installed on Maple Street heading northeast to Nonatuck Street. This was part of an ordinance change. And uh, two, uh, two of those pedestrian paddles have been placed at um, Cordicelli Street and uh, Blitz Street. So we've, we've looked at a variety of ways to kind of address the speeding problem, but ultimately when we reviewed the data and after <coughs> a much internal conversation, it's the DPW's recommendation that the, the temporary speed humps um, be turned into permanent speed humps at the location that the temporary ones were installed at, and that's the recommendation that we come to this commission. Thank you very much. Are there any kind of clarifying questions from the commission before we turn over to the public? What's the curve to curve dimension of Nantuck? Meg, can you provide that answer? Right. Thanks. Okay. There are, as you can see, a large number of people here today. We normally don't set time limits for comments, but what I'd like to do is set a three minute time limit for each person. Um, and invite everyone to double dip, which frankly often happens anyway. People will kind of sit down, think of something else, and come up to speak again. That's perfectly fine, but in order to be accommodate everyone who's here today, I'm going to suggest we <coughs> have a three minute limit. And so, Councilor Shera is going to have a beeping phone. Um, and I just ask when the phone beeps, if you wrap up your current thought, knowing you can come back later if you need to. Okay? And so, in no particular order, if um, I would just call on any person who wants to provide public comment to come on up, give your name and address for the record, please. And I won't call on you, just kind of, everyone can sort it out themselves. Well, I'm back, folks. Um, John Rose, 172 Nine Park Street. Um, the west, far west speed hump was 50 feet from the end of my driveway. And I came home on a Friday night and saw that beautiful sign right at the end of my, my sidewalk. Um, was not a happy camper, but you know, so I came to the last meeting. I, I want to thank the commission for at least getting the word out to the residents. We got a nice letter from David Murphy. Uh, that's probably why we have a good crowd here tonight. Um, so it does, it does work when you inform the residents of what's going on. Uh, I want to thank you for that. Um, in looking at Maggie Chan's um, memo to um, uh, to recommend the, the speed humps. Um, there was a meeting on September 12, 2016 between three, North, three Nonatuck Street residents, um, Maggie Chan and Dave Vallette. And there was a discussion about a medical center by Landy Avenue, a daycare facility, pedestrian safety, crosswalk, street trees, and additional traffic calming solutions. Um, in a, uh, I don't know if, this is a Mass Department of Transportation memo states, <laughs> typical characteristics of settings associated with traffic coming are concentrated generators of pedestrian activity. For example, school campuses, elderly housing, downtown retail districts, main street shopping areas, public assembly venues, stadiums, auditoriums, recreation destinations, parks, playgrounds, healthcare complexes, and large employers. 
none of those are on Manitouk Street. So, so we're, you know, we're, it, it's, you know, pedestrians do have a, a sidewalk. Um, I, I've lived there since 1960. Just to give my age, I was seven years old when I, when I moved there. I survived. I should have a t-shirt that says, I survived Nonatuck Street. I raised three kids there. You know, the, the common sense thing is you don't tell them to play in the street. Um, one of the things in this, in this uh, Department of Transportation memo also, um, <clears throat> potential disadvantages. Traffic calming and traffic management measures can slow emergency response. Now, I know that, that that street, police, ambulances, fire, and I haven't seen any discussion about the impact to emergency vehicles. Um, none of that's been discussed. It's not in any memos that I've seen. And I'd, I'd like the commission to delay the vote on this and get some input from ambulance drivers, from fire, and from police. I think we're, we're creating a firestorm here. Um, not to mention, and I mentioned this at the last meeting, the noise is horrendous. And I know that Maggie outlined in her memo that maybe a, a permanent speed bump would be less noisy than a, than a hard rubber one. But you're, you're going to have to convince me of that because it definitely, I mean, I lived with it. And I know that it's creating problems. Okay. It's very noisy. And I think that, uh, you know, with increased uh, police presence on the street, <coughs> I think we can, we can calm the traffic. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Please just step right up. Thank you. Uh, I'm Alexander from Puchas, 113 Nantuck Street, and I'm the guy who initiated this traffic coming petition initially. Three minutes, how to summarize a, a multi-year <coughs> process. Um, we, I don't think anybody in here would disagree we live on a great street. It's a super rich street, lots of really great residents, um, daycare centers, medical facilities, commercial businesses, an elderly center. It is a major thoroughfare for high school students commuting for bikers. Um, coming on two years now, many of us residents began organizing and engaging with the committee and folks at the DPW to figure out how to calm traffic and make our street safer. From that time and long before to today, we have continually sounded the alarm that we were waiting, poised to have a major accident and somebody killed on Nonatuck Street. Um, and in hopes, we've engaged in this process in hopes that a catastrophe could be averted, that we would be able to put stuff in place to make sure that that didn't happen. In the past year, as the director said, a lot of really great stuff has happened, and we're so thankful to the DPW and the committee for making that happen. Fog lines, um, crosswalk uh, indicators, uh, intersection signs, all of that has been awesome. Uh, and we've seen some change as residents. But Given the recent death on our street yesterday, somebody was hit on their bicycle at the, at the crosswalk of Hinkley, and they're dead. I'm not saying we don't know what the verdict on that is, we don't know if it's speed related, but I think what it does is, what it does is though it highlights the realities that our street is a dangerous place, that people do get hurt, that there are major sections that are of an issue. And unfortunately, just telling our kids to be in their house and not to be on the street is not gonna address that. Now, I am not, have never been somebody who's been pushing speed tables. I'm not like signed on to a speed table company. I'm not a rep. I'm not looking to make money off of this. But from my understanding of the research, speed tables and physical alterations of the roadway are the way that people slow down. And we saw that and the data supported that on Nantuck. I think it's important to recognize, as Mr. Rose pointed out, that our understanding is that the speed humps that go in in Nonatuck will not be the same that are the temporary bumps, so they'll be less noisy. And to take the longer view around this, which is that culture takes time to shift. If that many, many trucks began to, or that many less cars traveled at lower speeds in that short amount of time, with speed tables in place, what the noise that's there now in the first months is not going to be the reality six months from now. So I think it's a really compelling reason to try them. Um, I want to also say just really quickly that in addition to voting on the permanent installation of these speed tables, I am really begging this committee and this community to think about this street more holistically. It's not just Nonatuck, but it's also Elm. And to create a comprehensive plan 
that slows traffic in all of these key sections is the way to get our streets safer. So speed tables are a great stop step. Lowering speed limits, the city has control over that. Lowering speed limits could address that issue and get people moving slower. Digital speed signs we've talked about on Elm Street, potentially near the high school, proving a study which would lead to a crosswalk being put in. And so there's a lot of different strategies. I really thank you. And what I would ask in closing is just that anybody who's not in support, we fully get it, but if we could be solutions-based, which is if it's not going to be this, then what will it be? It needs to stop because it's a really dangerous place Thanks to live. Much. And I'd like to make one comment uh, going forward. To do, it's kind of old-fashioned, but when people address uh, this commission and others, we kind of have a rule that you address the commission or me rather than others in the audience um, only because it, it keeps things civil. And it's, it's totally appropriate to have a back and forth about ideas, but address them to the commission because that old-fashioned rule helps keep things flowing well. So My apologies. It was oh, and no apology is, is yeah. necessary. Just laying out that rule. Yeah. So yes, sir. Hi, uh, Steve Bandera. I actually live on Market Street, but uh, I have experience with uh, speed humps that we have uh, on North Street. And I'm just here to give a cautionary tale. Um, with all due respect to DPW, uh, really respect the work that DPW does. Uh, we think they do a fantastic job, and I, and I hate to speak in opposition of anything they're saying. Um, but my feeling is that we don't let, that there are other things we can do besides speed bumps. That uh, was mentioned, the uh, radar, a permanent radar fixture to, uh, with feedback on somebody's speed, uh, <coughs> things you can do painting the road um, that, that help also. But my experience with speed bumps is that it will turn the neighborhood, it, it will make it a complete nightmare to drive around your own neighborhood. So every time we have to leave our neighborhood, we have to go over three speed bumps. And what happens is you have to slow down to almost a complete stop at each one of them. So we have a newer car with a lower clearance, and that has to almost stop to get over the bumps. And then I have an old car with a suspension that isn't really so good, but it gets completely destroyed by the speed bump. So I, I'm going from zero to 10 just to make it over the speed bump, and I have to speed back up, then I immediately have to stop, almost completely stop again, and then I speed back up, and then I immediately have to stop again. It, it, this is just to go out, just to go somewhere, to get out of your own neighborhood. So I completely respect and understand traffic calming and the need to want to have a safe neighborhood. Um, that is totally understandable. We all want safe neighborhoods. We all want people um, to feel comfortable in their own neighborhoods. But I think to let hysteria and, and panic take over over common sense is not the solution. I, I just don't think we can turn Northampton into a place where there's speed bumps on every street. <laughs> we have speed limits. There are other things we can do uh, besides speed bumps. So some of the other concerns that we have uh, are emergency vehicles, our fire, police, and our ambulances. Um, plowing is also difficult. We've seen the plows have a difficult time sometimes with the speed bumps. And honestly, people that have uh, disabilities so if they have some sort of maybe back issue or other um, neck or spinal issue, going over speed bumps is quite difficult. So if you live in the neighborhood, you're now gonna be forced to go over these bumps over and over every day, every time you go in and out of the neighborhood. So there is a major downside to what you're considering. And I hope I have brought to light some of these things here and urge you not to do this. Don't ruin your own neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Lynn Randall Williamson, and I live at 163 Donovan Street, Florence. And when purchasing a home, part of your decision-making process is whether you want to live in a closed-in neighborhood or you want to live on a busy street. I was fully aware of the traffic on Donovan Street when I bought my home in 1979, and I raised three sons there who attended JFK and Northampton High School. I made my children aware of the need for safety rules. They biked and walk to and from school, as well as after school activities. We never felt the need to control the traffic by such means as traffic calming. Last fall, a temporary traffic calming bump or hump was installed in front of my home 
and just shortly after it, so no matter which way I went when I got out of my house or went to get into my house, I had to encounter these. There was no notification to us by mail. The quality of my life was greatly affected. The noise pollution caused me to jump out of my seat on occasion as well as frighten my dog, so she barked much of the time, even in the night waking me. So this noise that comes from there is not the traffic bump. It's the cars that go over it with the loose ladders. It's the big 18-wheelers. The noise isn't coming from the bump. It's people trying to maneuver over them. My breathing was affected by the air pollution as I have asthma, forcing me to keep my windows closed. I watched some drivers who were unaware of the bumps or humps nearly hit the ceiling of their car when they hit them, and another man who hit his face on his steering wheel. On another occasion, I watched two open-style Jeeps as they sped up before they hit the bumps for the thrill of getting air by coming off the road and landing on the other side. The overall effect of these traffic calming strips was to bring cars to a near stop, after which they sped up, with the effect being practically no slowing of traffic. And we then have, of course, the exhaust every time they start up again. So certain studies I read, like the National Motorist Association, OSHA, American, <clears throat> Americans with Disability, point to increases in the time for emergency vehicles to reach their destination, increases in damage to vehicles, and increases in maintenance of vehicles. The study's conclusion being installation of these traffic calming structures brings about questionable positive results. Other studies by realtor groups consistently link, linked speed bumps or humps and neighborhood undesirability, thereby lowering the value of our homes. I would ask you to reconsider installing traffic calming structures possibly returning to the issuing of you know, traffic tickets. We have had frequently people on our roads uh, to watch the speed, uh, which would generate income for the city while eliminating the need to spend thousands of dollars on materials, machinery, manpower, and creating friction between neighbors. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Good evening, Matthew Jarrett, 14 on up sheet. Uh, I'd like to respond to John Rose's comment about the sign. Uh, I also had a, a sign placed on my property that I had uh, not received any notification of. Right, wrong, or indifferent. Uh, it's dramatically unappealing. However, I don't mind because we do have a traffic problem. I'm concerned that there's no speed humps specifically considered for my portion of Nonatuck, which is on the incline portion of the lower um, numbered portion. Uh, my wife's car was struck in May 2014 by a, a person's car who was traveling uphill from the, the high school. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, uh, they left a 46 foot long tire track, uh, which if you estimate on flat ground, uh, dry conditions, ideal conditions, that, was, that would be a, a beginning speed of 33 miles an hour when their brakes actually lock the wheels. So traveling up speed, or uphill, uh, and you lose speed before your brakes actually lock, they were traveling well in excess of of the, uh, the speed limit, which is 30, as it was mentioned earlier. Um, I also heard people, uh, several people comment on emergency response. Um, I'm all in favor of emergency vehicles and personnel getting to where they need to in a responsible amount of time. Uh, but I hear wind gusts like you wouldn't imagine when police officers fly up Nonatuck. I, I, I see the sirens come, or the, the lights come in, go out. They're, they're gone. I, mean, I can't imagine how fast they're, they're, they're traveling. I don't, I don't know if that's necessary or not. I'm not an expert, but I think it's, it seems excessive, at least to this one resident. Um, yesterday, a um, little man was hit uh, riding a, a, a bicycle on our street, and I've heard he passed. I did not know that, um, just to reiterate that. Um, and anecdotally, I hear the blaring of car horns every single day at the intersection of uh, Federal, South Maine, Nonotuck, and Elm. Uh, I'm right there, just a couple houses away. And the geometry of that intersection, uh, it, it should be addressed in the future, but I acknowledge that it's not up for discussion here. Uh, however, speed will un uh, a lower speed, lowering of the speed will undoubtedly positively impact the occurrence of hazardous situations developing there at that intersection. Uh, and one last uh, quick comment. Uh, there are some speed humps that I think are really, really effective in Amherst. Uh, if you're traveling up Route 9 towards Amherst, and you, instead of taking a left towards downtown, you keep going on College Street. Uh, they're near approximately 25, 55, and 102 College Street, Amherst. Um, it's a similar downhill grade, and what they've done is they flattened it out so that 
um, there's crosswalks there, and then it goes down again and flattens and down and flattens. And I think those are very effective, um, and uh, I, I believe they're, they're relatively quiet. I know they have cafes there where people sit around. So if the geometry is still up uh, for discussion, I, I like to just make that a personal recommendation that I think is pretty effective. <coughs> and effective geometry that would work in my, at least on my portion of the street. So thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. John Norton. I don't live on the, the, the Round Street or not at all, but I live on uh, Winslow Avenue, uh, which is just to the south, paralleling uh, basically Elm Street. And I, uh, coming to this meeting, I didn't realize that uh, Elm Street was not under consideration, but it definitely should be, because that's where if you crest the hill coming from the west, you go toward the high school, you have a vista of uh, uh, downhill, uh, and it invites people to go really fast there. And that's where my neighbor, I just learned that this meeting, on a bicycle, which was was killed in, in, that, in that area, and if it, there should be incredible uh, sense of sorrow amongst everybody here that somebody on a bicycle was killed by a car. I don't know the circumstances, but I'm really upset by my neighbor, who I knew well, who passed by my house every day to go riding on his bicycle up to uh, Look Park and had to uh, get across uh, where Nanatuck and Elm Street uh, join, and how he's dead. Uh, as I understand it, the, the fix of, uh, of uh, Hinckley uh, is going to have a, a, a sidewalk included, and uh, at another meeting I uh, learned from the DPW representative there that they're going to extend that sidewalk across the, the junction of Monotuck and Elm uh, as a speed bump, perfectly placed. The other, the other section of Elm Street, which is uh, a real danger, is the intersection of federal and, and uh, Elm, because it's a peculiar uh, offset uh, 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 intersection. And I think that an immediate uh, police chief is here uh, uh, made a suggestion that there should be a four-way stop there to keep people from uh, speeding through there. And I'm in thorough <coughs> agreement with that. Um, the the non-attack section doesn't really concern our area. Uh, yes, thank you. <coughs> yes, sir. Uh, my name is Rick Haggerty, 63 Nonatuck Street. I'm a 21-year resident. Uh, Mr. O'Donnell, uh, commission, 
and uh, DPW, thank you so much for taking an interest in this. My condolences to the gentleman for the loss of his neighbor, and everybody who's so adversely affected uh, by this death. Um, I do thank you for your recommendations and your traffic study and implementations. Um, it's been a long 21 years, uh, a dangerous street. We have a wonderful group of neighbors, wonderful kids from our street and you know, uh, Beacon up behind us. Uh, my son, you know, graduated from <coughs> Stanton High School and you know walked down the hill or drove down the hill. Um, but I've witnessed uh, multiple crashes, high-speed travel, and uh, I was uh, present after uh, after all of these events, including the fatality yesterday. Um, one particular crash that comes to mind, similar to what the gentleman mentioned. Uh, I was up doing work on the second floor of my home and I heard it, what sounded like a car peeling out and I realized a car was turning into Baker Hill Road and I'm 63, not 61, but 59. Car began skidding at 59, I'm not sure of the distance, but the police department did indicate uh, a high rate of speed and the driver was sighted. He crashed into the SUV that was turning onto Baker Hill Road and he had two small children in the back of the car there was a child in the SUV. Thank, thank goodness, you know, no one was hurt, but it, it just felt like a time bomb waiting to happen. We had a young woman uh, texting, ran into a car at the corner of Blue Street, crashed into a car. Not a tough coming uh, east. Bends ever so slightly left, just at New Street. Fellow fell asleep. He kept going straight, crashed into a telephone pole. These have all been, you know, near losses of life. Um, the crest of the hill at Nonantuck, uh, I believe, at this Hinkley location, is an area that's in need of speed humps. Yes, you did a study on a straightaway. It's a straightaway from Greg's Auto, formerly Rick's Auto, all the way down to Corticelli. It's straight, it's really dangerous at that crest. And that intersection at Federal, again, precarious. High school students walk through there all the time. I'm surprised. You know, no one's been hurt. At least someone was hit with a side view mirror down around that vicinity. We really need speed humps, not only, you know, throughout, but that crest coming over my house, Baker Hill Road, and down that hill, that side of the hill, as well as the other end of Nonatuck Street. So if noise is a problem with humps, 63 Nonatuck Street, I'd rather lose sleep than have any vulnerable person of our community like the elderly person that lost his life, or like the children that live directly across the street from my home uh, are in danger. Um, so please, I implore you to move forward and to move forward with humps on each end of that road so our uh, citizens are more safe. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. I, I just have a couple of clarifying comments that yes. may help here. Um, as part of the reconstruction of Hinkley Street, um, we are installing a raised crosswalk there. So that is, you know, sort of a, a equivalent to a speed hump, basically. Um, the, the second comment I have is that it's part of the DPW standard uh, policy and, and, and practice that, that any time we consider installing a speed hump anywhere, we uh, consult with emergency services. And in this case, we did so and Nonatuck Street is not considered a, uh, a primary emergency response route. Um, based on the, it's the, 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 based yeah. on the, based on the feedback that we got from the police and fire. Uh, with that being said, obviously that feeds yeah. into our recommendations. But we always consult with public safety anytime we make a recommendation. Thank you very much. Okay. Oh, no. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Uh, I want to thank all this work that's being done. And uh, my name is Jim Corman. And I live on Marion Street, but my daughter lives on Nonatuck Street, 198. And she'd be here tonight, but she just had a baby, so I felt I needed to be here. And um, they uh, built a fence around their house, and they've had three car crashes in one year. And um, uh, the police, uh, the chief of police has been kind enough to come out and talk to my daughter and so forth and talk about studies and so forth. 
And uh, that's all I wanted to say, that I, I feel that, and I've done work on the house, and I was shocked of the speed. This is the other end, I don't know what end that would be, it's whatever, but it's uh, opposite the high school. And I was shocked of the speed, especially of some of the, of the trucks coming down the road. And as far as speed bumps go, I say go for it. And I mean, if you have an old car, you have a new car, that's it. You know, I mean, that, but it is, the purpose of speed bump is to slow down. And then you know you'll be gentle over those speed bumps. And I'm sure the DPW knows their heights. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? We'll go here and then we'll go to you, sir. Um, hello, my name is uh, Jane Deal, and I live at um, 54 Nonatuck, right at the intersection of Nonatuck and Hankley. Uh, my house sits very close to that intersection, and I've been there oh, since the late 80s. Uh, my dog is an adult now, but it's raised there. And it is a dangerous intersection. I feel like I'm somewhat of an authority now on that crossroads of the world because I, I see it all. Um, and it is, and cars do go fast, but I don't think speed is the only factor for safety there. I watch people do all kinds of crazy things. Um, there's a lot of distracted drivers. I watch people, even during rush hour, they're going down and they're looking, they're on the phone, they're looking at their, you know, looking at the phone, they're on their phone. Um, I've seen kids on bikes who are texting, no hands, and they're texting as they're going down there. Um, you know, people use that intersection and they'll, they want to turn around, so they back into it, they'll stop back into Hinkley and turn, you know, so there's a lot of factors other than just speed um, as to why it's dangerous. Um, and also sun glare. The sun glare is awful. In the morning, going down to the high school, when the sun's coming up, certain times of the year, it is like right in your eyes and it's even worse starting now, like as the sun sets later and later going, because you're going east and west and you're driving. Sometimes when I'm coming in, it's like I'm, I'm totally blind for a few minutes. You know, you literally cannot see. Um, and I don't know if science could be put up for like sun glare. And, I mean, so there's all different factors, I feel, and, and like what makes that a dangerous intersection. Um, and there's a lot of, I mean, some of it's human error. Um, when I was in college, I got hit as a pedestrian in Boston. It was at night. Uh, I was crossing the street, and a car was making a turn, and I just assumed they saw me. And I started crossing the street, and it was just turning the corner. It was almost stopped. But then I remember seeing the headlights and saying, thinking, they're not, they're speeding up. They're not going <coughs> slower. So, you know, they did not see me and my friend. And that was, since then, I am so careful crossing the street because I never, ever assume a car has seen me until I see it slow down and give me, you know, the okay. And that, and driving in, in Northampton, I live in fear that I'm gonna hit someone sometimes. Because people, even with cross rides and what, cross rocks and lights, people don't even look anymore. They just assume I am a pedestrian, I have the right of way, and people are gonna, they're gonna stop for me. Well, you hope that they do, but there are times if there's some glare, there's distractions. Um, so I think there's other things um, other than, you know, just the speed, is that the okay. people, I, I came home right after, when, um, after the accident happened, I like, really, um, I was hoping that he was going to be all right, um, I'm sad to hear that he's not, and I don't know, and I, what was the fact just before, but there are people that don't look. You know, so that does happen, and I, you know, someone could, you can get hurt if you get hit, someone's going 20 miles an hour if you walk out in front of the car. Well, thank you very much. Um, so anyway, I just think there's a, there's a big picture here on how to make that safe, yep. and uh, not just, just the speed. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Anyone else? Yes, sir.
I from Bruce Lathrop. I live at 142 Nine and have for 20 years or so. Um, I just like to say I love the speed bumps. I don't care what anybody else says. I live right between those speed bumps. Um, in my experience over 21 years, my car was uh, rear-ended once, almost totaled as a kid lost control coming over that famous hump going east towards the high school. I was parked in my neighbor's front yard. I wasn't on the curb. I was five or six feet in their front yard um, when he came way up and crashed. I was at the convenience store next to the Great Wall restaurant, um, and a kid was in there bragging how he had 85 miles an hour on a truck last night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and, and I had some words with him. Um, people don't go a little bit fast on a truck. They go a lot fast on a truck. I sit out there at night, I go to get my mail. People are going 60, 65 miles an hour a lot. Those speed humps were wonderful. I get back on my driveway. I'm with Rick. Put it in front of my driveway. If other people don't like the noise, put it right in front of my driveway. It makes such a big difference in our quality of life. Um, I, I can't say enough good things about the study. I'm glad it finally happened. I should have been more proactive years ago because it's the kind of street you're just you're afraid to go on. Um, that's all I have to say. Thanks, Mr. Mm-hmm. Hi, I'm Lizzie B. I also live at 63 Nonatuck, and I cross Nonatuck by foot every single day. Um, I work from home. My office is in the front of the house, facing Nonatuck Street. In front of a, my desk is in front of a giant picture window, and I see it all day, every day. Cars going 50, 60 miles an hour regularly. Every time I go up the hill, if I'm driving from the high school, that 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 sort of you know, people people accelerating to get up the hill and get over that bump, which is right exactly where our house is, um, is just crazy. I go 35 tops, 30 usually, on that street, and I have never, ever once had a car behind me on that hill not riding my tail, trying to push me to go further every single day. Um, I babysit for a six and nine year old who live at 68 on a tuck street. They are scared, and rightfully so. I mean, I'm not. I don't, I don't want to. I want them to feel safe with me. But they see it. They see it all day. They have a big front yard. They run around it, and it's scary. You know, they get off the school bus, and cars run through the stop signs of the school bus, and it's not going 20, and it's not going 30. It's going 50, 60. I saw a UPS tractor trailer last week go at least 60 miles an hour past the house when I was getting the mail. Getting the mail is scary. Um, I'm pregnant, I'm gonna have a child on Nonatuck, and it really, really scares me. Um, and you know, the people who live on Baker Hill Road that I watch go for their runs every day, people on Hinkley, the Federal Street intersection is insane. I mean, it's a, it's a, the design of that is a total safety hazard. Um, and I'm, I'm frankly shocked that there's any opposition to this. I'm very surprised by that. I too, would, my bedroom is right in front by Nonatuck. I've been falling asleep and been jolted away <coughs> by the loudness of the rushing of cars. Unbelievable at night. Um, I, I, I grew up in New York City. I know how to cross a busy street. And every day I feel like there's an almost because you can't see cars coming up the hill. I have perfect eyesight, I have perfect hearing. I'm a young woman. They just fly right up and they're right there and often don't even slow down when they see me. Um, and it's very, very scary. And what happened yesterday was completely tragic. And it, it doesn't, honestly, doesn't matter to me whose fault the accident was. It was inevitable that a fatality was going to happen on that street with the way that the driving happens. And I think a lot of people on the street, you know, there's a lot of pedestrians, there's a lot of bicyclists, but there's a lot of people who never get out of their cars, and maybe they don't realize how dangerous it is. But it is terrifying every single day, and I would gladly have the noise of the speed bumps over the rushing of, of speeding vehicles. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else like to? Yes, sir. Hi, my name is David Hammer. I live at 68 on Tech Street. Um, and I guess I would just say, like, for the speed ups. I think it's great. Um, I say, so I've lived in Nantuck just for a little under two years, so it's pretty new. Um, 
The only thing I don't love about the neighborhood is that my kids were six and nine who get taken care of by Lucy. Um, uh, the, it's, it's not like neighborhood enough that if we slow traffic down, walking down federal to go to the, to the, to the river, um, uh, walking across, like it's just like, I feel like, you know, if speed humps make driving like more annoying, that's gonna make that neighborhood better, right? So if somebody just bought a house there, like when the speed humps were put in, it was great. It really, like, we loved it. It really, we felt it made a big impact. Um, and uh, it's just something that I think will sort of actually really, you know, sort of improve the neighborhood and make it, you know, just like taking things down a little bit is a way to make a neighborhood more of a sort of a, a, a place that has just like a, a nice feel to it. So um, thank you. I think it'd be wonderful to do it. I urge you both to Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. Anyone else like to? Hi, my name is Natasha Yakovlev. I have I live at 147 Nonasuk Street. I've been there for going on 14 years now. Um, I have two daughters, 17 and 14 years old, and since we have lived there, the traffic has sped up exponentially. It's kind of shocking. <coughs> and the way I'm approaching the trap the traffic common conversation <coughs> is it's about the quality of life for all of us. And it, it, you know, and that's true for people who are going to be living near the speed bumps if they go in themselves. They need quality of life too. And I, I do think that we can come to a common ground on all of this because it involves our happiness, our safety, the safety of our children, making our neighborhood more of a recreational place. We live a stone's throw from Maze Field, a stone's throw from the Mill River. People should feel safe crossing the street. They should feel safe sending their kids out on bikes to go to the store of the street or go to a friend's house. I don't right now. And I have teenagers who've been riding bikes since they were toddlers. And I especially don't after um, the tragedy that occurred yesterday. And again, we don't know the circumstances of it, but still, it, like many people have said today, it was inevitable. Um, part of quality of life also is, is how we feel about the value of our properties, I believe. And I think that to say that we have, that there's a, this broad brush of property values going down the speed humps is somewhat incorrect. I consulted with a local appraiser and asked him what his opinion was on speed humps in the neighborhood. And he, his knowledge was that, um, Grove Street and Holly Street haven't seen any dips in their property values since their speed humps have gone in. And granted, we're talking about two very different neighborhoods, but overall, I think that this is going to be a benefit for us. It's going to be a benefit for our children. And like other people have said, it's just going to bring everything down a little bit. We can all live with that. Thank you so much for the work. Thank you very much. Anyone else like to comment? <coughs> I'm Maureen Scanlon. I live at 197 Monotoc, and I um, have been very appreciative that some of my neighbors on the street, particularly neighbors with young families, have committed themselves to try to improve the um, safety on the street. The, all I would like is for people to drive the speed limit. And I'm sad to think that speed humps are what we're going to end up with, two speed humps that affect one contained portion of the street and not either of the gateways that where people can pick up speed. But I want to support the families. And what we've got on the table is two speed humps that will slow down traffic in one long stretch of the street. Um, I, I'm going to support it. I wish we could have pursued other ideas for traffic calming that were more creative and visionary, pursued narrowing of the street, or in fact narrowing of the street. But, um, or by adding, adding actual bike lane, changing just other ideas that we've heard that other communities have done. I understand the reality is what we can do right now are two speed humps in that section. So, a very uh, conditional thank you and uh, approval from my perspective. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Kerr. Would anyone else like to comment? Yes, please. I'm uh, Patty Arbor, 129 Nonatuck and I speak for my husband, Chuck Stern. Um, so our house is pretty much right in front of where the speed bumps are. Uh, say for last summer, we've lived a relatively peaceful existence at 129 o'clock for over 30 years. Yes, there are speeders on the street, but they are nowhere near as disturbing as a tremendous increase in noise and pollution caused by your well-intentioned attempt to solve the problem. I'm not sure I can adequately describe the level of constant and very real disturbance. Every vehicle slowed by the bump is forced to then accelerate with its 
concomitant noise and pollution. Every pickup with something loose in the back, every trailer, every motorcycle, every angry idiot blowing his or her horn and peeling away impinges on the pleasure of the yard, the garden, a simple conversation. And special mention should be given to the downshifting and accelerating large trucks, particularly the diesels. And it affects us <coughs> at night. We are forced to close our windows in the bedroom or, sleep, or simply sleep undisturbed. This is really unfair. Please understand that if this was a simple irritation, you would not be hearing from us. It is an ongoing and profoundly disturbing change that we hope you will not inflict on us again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to comment this time? Okay. Um, we appreciate getting all of those comments. Um, I'd like to turn it over to the commission at this point and ask if there are members of the commission who have questions to ask or comments to make or positions to explain. Um, so we've heard a lot about uh, maybe different placement of the speed bumps. Um, Director Lascalia, I mean, I know that there is, you know, there has to be certain spacing and there are reasons for why they're placed there, but is there is there a possibility for changing where they're placed or um, making adjustments with that? We have to do further study on that. This was the, uh, this was the location kind of based on the geography of the roadway um, that we determined they would have the most impact. Can you explain that a little bit more? Is that because that's the straightest section? The straightest Could section. you speak up a little bit, please? Yes, I'm sorry. DBW, I just couldn't hear yep. with your head. Sure. Thank you. I, I said based you. on the geography of the roadway, this was the area that we determined um, that, that they should be placed to have the greatest impact. <coughs> well, and just to clarify, you're considering those two in relation to the third and he yeah, the third, it, it's, a, it's a raised crosswalk at Hinkley. Do those have the same impact, raised crosswalks, when you look at studies? Do they have the same impact on speed? I don't know the answer to that. Do you know, as a follow-up question, uh, the signs that flash when you, when you hit a certain speed, I'm not sure the term for those signs. I know they've been effective in some areas, not in our city particularly, that I can think of, but do you know if those have a what kind of impact those have on speed? I, I think any sort of visual uh, tool like that does have an impact. I, I don't have, you know, like specific engineering uh, <laughs> numbers. Let me ask you if you have this. Uh, Is there a cost comparison between the speed pumps that we're looking at and a, and a sign like that? And I'm only thinking, listening to everything, all, there was a lot of great feedback, and thank you everyone for taking the time out of your evening to come. I think we all agree that traffic is a problem there. We know speeding cars are there. Um, we definitely want to do something and we want to move forward thoughtfully. I'm just thinking, you know, obviously the, the noise is a factor for, for these these humps or tump, whatever, tables, bumps. <laughs> so I'm just wondering if those signs are in any way equivalent on the impact they have and the cost factor. The cost factor, they're, they're definitely more expensive than the installation of you know, an asphalt speed home. Yeah. Um, and then there's sort of the maintenance component that goes into the sign as well. I, uh, I guess I default to the belief that signage is less effective than altering the actual geometry of a road. Um, I mean, all, some people raise the idea of lowering the speed limit. I would suggest that that would not be an effective solution but maybe certain signage is, has unique properties. <coughs> I have to leave a couple minutes, so I'll take a first line and walk out. But I, mean, I, I don't know the answer in terms of the placement issue, and so it would be nice to place them where neighbors want them rather than not want them. Um, I, so I guess I, all I can say is I'm convinced that something needs to be done. Speed homes are relatively inexpensive, and so I think DPW's recommendation makes sense. I. I I think regardless of the solution, it should be considered this is sort of a, a couple year solution. We need to look at more longer term basis. And certainly federal and Elm, we were talking about mini roundabout there, we were talking about different solutions. I sort of hope we keep focusing on a longer term solution in 
as it's up two or three years. Thank you. And by the way, um, can we actually get a motion? I'll ask if there's any appetite in the commission to make a motion for a positive recommendation for these speed bumps uh, to have them be permanently installed. And I, I, put, I phrase it that way, not to put my thumb on the scale, because if you don't want a positive recommendation, you can vote no. But is there a motion just to get this on the floor for procedural purposes? And moved. Okay, is there a second? <coughs> is there any discussion, further discussion, on the question of making a recommendation to the mayor to build these speed bumps? Can I ask before we ask um, What about some of the other ideas that were thrown out? Now, in the street or, or bike lanes? What do you have opinions on? Yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of the experience is some combination of all the things. So, when Smith College did the work to calm traffic on Elm Street, they put a diverter in at the beginning to, to sell cars down. They put a raised intersection that was less about making the intersection safe and more slow cars. They pulled in those, you know, speed devices in it you're talking about. Um, and I think some combination of all those things are good. The issue about speed homes is they're the least expensive way and just the least amount of sight. So, you know, on Elm on the Pleasant Street, we were spending three quarters of a million dollars. We're narrowing the street as narrow as twenty feet at three different intersections. And I think this all evidence that the horizontal narrowing could be as effective as the vertical deflections and a lot less noisy. So I think they're great solutions. But it's more expensive and takes study. And of course, the problem with narrowing is that you lose the ability for a bike lane unless you do it behind. So, yes, it goes through the whole way. And, and people talk about looking at this holistically. I totally agree. But none of them are going to be fast. None of them are going to be cheap. Can I ask is there, is there anything coming from Alta or the citywide work that's been done on traffic calming in regard to Alta? Not in this level of detail. I mean, sort of, I, I'd have to look at the, the report to tell you for sure. But I think it's certainly they've not. I mean, you know, there's this term that started in Scandinavia about vision zero. That's sort of saying we should we should be accepting no no fatalities as a result of traffic accidents. And so they're trying to push that, and they gave a lot of examples, but not if it's really going to help Donna make final decisions. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Oh my gosh, the the bike lanes. I mean, we did delineate the edge of the road with the, with the white fog lines. They're not bike lanes because there wasn't sufficient there. But they're there, so people are able to bike in that area. Did you take the lane down? Did you neck it down? Is it the same lane width it was? Pre-painted? Could you, could you bring it down to 10 or 11 feet as opposed to wider? So it was painted down to the 11 feet. Tell you what I think. I think that um, I think that this is a, a complex problem, and this is one of these things that local government finds itself uh, struggling to find a solution to. And I think perhaps there is no perfect solution. But it's my opinion, from my observations, and from what I've heard from people, and from the uh, careful work of the DPW, that there is a speeding and other traffic problems on Nottingham Street, and that. Even though Nottatuck Street is essentially multiple streets, it's at least three streets because it's so long. There's the part below the hill, there's the straightaway, there's the part beyond Pine Street, um, and so forth. It has many different components and challenges. I don't want to not take action because we haven't identified a way to solve all the challenges. Sometimes, unfortunately, you have to make incremental progress if you're going to make progress at all.
And sometimes those solutions are not gonna be with 100% acceptance or claim, but I think it would be, personally, I will support this because it would be the, the worst outcome in my mind to not take action uh, when there is a problem. So that is my thinking on this question. Just to state my opinion for the record. Um, unless there's any other comments from the commission, I would ask that we take a vote. Yes. Go ahead. Um, are there, are, are there other possibilities in terms of, of like doing more of a speed table as opposed to a hump that would be quieter? Uh, in this particular case, or, or uh, strike that, typically we install tables if it's a primary emergency response route. And we do that to facilitate the passing of heavy vehicles over the speed table. Heavy emergency vehicles that need to travel at a high rate of speed to get where they're going. So in this case, um, because it is not a primary emergency response route, speed humps would have more of a deflection than the speed table are with the recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. This is a, a casual request, but I think that oftentimes we get in this environment and then we come to a vote and decision. And I know it's it takes some effort to go out and check speed again, but after we get the, the road redesigned with some traffic calming, you know, tables in it or speed humps is what you're actually putting in, I think. Um, could I just plant the idea, it's not a formal request, but that at some point later, checking the speed on that road, I think would be important to the neighborhood. I think they, they'd like to know that what we did improved things, and that's the only way I know we'll know to tell them. Sure. Do we know to... And the other thing I would note on that point, and, and the point that others have raised, is that a recommendation on, on these two speed bumps is not the equi equivalent of doing nothing for the rest of the street. There are many other problems that I think this commission will hear about in the future, and we'll find ourselves wrestling with those issues. So I don't want the public to think that this is the last <coughs> time we ever discuss issues in this part of the city. Is there uh, a universal standard for the way that the speed hump Permanent one is shaped that's going to be different, or there's going to be um, less noise um, than what this temporary one looks like. Is the temporary one like higher than temporary one is rubber, mm -hmm. and so it's it, it, that's very different than an asphalt deflection, and that's where you're getting more noise from is the material that the speed pump is. There is an industry standard for the construction of speed pumps that we follow. Yeah, there's a lot of growth. Yeah. So the tables would be so I'll just one thing because I, I hear a little grumbling, and it may be around the, the primary group issue. I think I've heard grumbling on that twice. So just to be clear about that, uh, we don't, our police department, we don't have primary routes. We go the fastest way to get somewhere. Um, the fire department actually has predetermined primary routes, so they know if you know wherever you live, they're going to go a certain way, and they have particular roads that are on those routes. We don't have that; we just go the fastest way. The <coughs> police department is definitely on Nonatuck Street a lot, and I'm sure that's why you're you're like we know you're on Nonatuck. We are on Nonatuck, absolutely, and we, and we use it. Um, but the primary <coughs> route issue that the director brought up is mostly for large vehicles. So our vehicles can go over these that we're talking about. We go over them everywhere. We go over them on, on Jackson Street, and they're on, on North and Holly, I believe, right? And we don't have any problems with them. So that's why if, if you have concerns about the difference in you know conversation around primary routes, it's a road we drive on. We drive on all the roads, but that's OK for our vehicles. We don't have a problem with it. We still don't just like the cars, just to be clear on that issue. Anyone else? Okay, we're ready to vote, then um, let's uh, do a roll call on this. Mm -hmm. uh, Gary Hartwell. I vote in favor. So is that Rosie? Yes. 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 Council O'Donnell. Yes. 
Ms. Lou Shearer? Yes. Debbie Bruce? Yes. Chief? Yes. 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 Abstain. Yes. Eight yes and one abstention. Okay, so the recommendation is approved uh, for this, this question. So thank you very much. And is there any new business today? Seeing none, is there a motion to adjourn? Okay. Uh, thank you very much.